In this video, I'm going to show you how my production company got our first $20,000 sync placement. But then we're going to discuss the dark side of sync licensing. Underground mafias, cocaine, and backdoor deals. Let me guess, the harpoon killed him. Yes, very good, detective. Hey, it's Daniel from Dark Label Music. And just a reminder before we jump into the video here, subscribe to Music Pro Daily. It's our podcast. And if you really want business insights from the trenches, as Mike Mani and I develop producers and help them build careers, then that's where you'll find all of the good stuff. So last week, we dropped a video about my old production team getting our first big custom music project with Marriott International. And I thought it'd be fun to do something kind of similar, but this week talk about the first big sync placement we got. So we'll talk about the brief, we'll show you the placement, we'll talk about how we made the song, how we got the job, and how much we got paid. And then at the end, I do wanna get into kind of the dark side of sync licensing because I feel a lot of YouTube videos aren't telling you the full story. And I'm not some big expert on it, but I don't have a course to sell you on sync and I feel like I can give you some insights from someone that's at least had a little bit of experience with it in the trenches and want to share what I know so that you can make smarter decisions for your career. Let me guess, the harpoon killed him. Yes, very good, detective. A found treasure. Seven million dollars in gold. Well, that's definitely motive for murder. Hides Henry's darkest secret. It can't be. Which he'll do anything to keep. Hurry, NYPD! Henry? What the hell? Academy Award winner Cuba Gooding Jr. guest stars. I think he winked at you. I'm a cop. You are a suspect. New Forever, Tuesday, March 24th, 10, 9 central on ABC. All right, so that was the placement in its entirety there. So it was just a 30 second promo. Let's talk a bit about the brief. The brief is just the description they give you of what they want. Now, luckily, our sync agent had a really good um, relationship with the people at this show or whoever the, 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 uh, supervisor. So we got a lot more information than normal. A lot of times you don't even know what it's going to be used for. And luckily we did. And we knew that it was a medical show for ABC. It was going to be a promo, which we'll talk about later on when I talk about how we got paid. I'll explain the different types of placements there. It was called forever. We knew that, so that kind of gave us a little bit of a theme, and the show was about like a doctor who could live forever, something along those lines. I don't know that the show's around anymore, and hopefully it wasn't because of our song. Let's just say it wasn't. And essentially what they wanted was kind of a rock, pop, high energy, um, similar to Fall Out Boy. They wanted, um, you know, some non-lyric vocal parts um so that they could use like with no you know so like woes and stuff like that where they're not going to use any lyrics then they wanted a um you know some instrumental parts which is what they primarily used uh, if you listen to when you listen to it and i'll show you the song the full song here in a second well not the full song but i'll play the real song for you i think i just spit on the camera so my apologies don't uh, don't me to me um but uh, yeah, they, they really only use like pretty much the bridge all the way through it. Then some of the non-lyric stuff. And then at the very end, they use the kind of tagline of the chorus. And that exited. That was it. So you can rewind back in here. So that, that's really it. We made a whole song, though. They want a real song. We even put together a band called Early Sound Era. And we named the song Everlasting Kind, which is important. So... Like titling the songs, you may hear people talk about this stuff, but like we knew it was for a show forever. So if we name the song The Everlasting Kind, which is about this person, not a doctor, but about this person that could stand the test of time and live forever, we, you know, luckily again, we have that information. You don't always get that information. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it, you know, it made sense for the show. So non lyric instrumental, they want kind of stabby, like we had stabby. Uh, piano chords going on in the very beginning of it, the camera shutter sound effects linking to that. Um, and I think that's about what we got. A lot of times they want something that like, we want it to sound like a real band. We don't want it to sound like, you know, it was written for this, even though it definitely was, but they always say they don't want it to sound that way. 
Um, and, you know, kind of Fallout Boy, but don't make it, you know, sound too much like Fallout Boy, which I think it kind of does, except our guitars are a little bit more out of tune than, than theirs. But uh, let's, let's check out a little bit of the song and then we'll come back to things here. We can never fade away. We can always stay the same. We can always live this way. Eternally. We race to the finish line. We seek until we find a way. All right, so there you go. It's a couple of clips from the song. And like I said, they didn't really use much of it. And that's, that's fine. They can use whatever whatever they want, as much or as little as they want. So they took the, really the, the primary tagline, be the everlasting kind. That's at the end. That's how it closes out. But the rest of it is just sections from the bridge, the piano stabs, incorporating some of the non-lyric vocal parts, just the whoa, whoa, whoa. That's it. That's all just blended back in in the background. So just wanted to show you that so you can hear the example and compare the two and be like, oh, wow, they only use like very little things. So I think those elements are important to have. At least it was for this brief. Now, the personnel on this project was we had same as last video with Marriott. Christian Fiore was the producer. Um, I did the writing of it and we had a fantastic singer who also did a little bit of writing, Glenn Campagna and... Jonathan Roy, same mixer from the last video, the Marriott video, he did the mixing. All right, so before we get into the payout for this, I just wanna explain a couple things and how they work, because there's kind of three different types here. There may be more, but for shows, these are the main ones. So you have in-show placements, which is what a lot of like the YouTube courses and stuff you see, it's the song that plays in an episode. So when we, you see people that say, hey, I have thousands of placements or whatever, most of the time they're in-show placements. They're not promo, which is still awesome. I'm not knocking it, but um, someone having thousands of promos would be insane. Um, those are usually in-show placements. It's music playing in the episode of the show. Um, then you have promo, which is what this is. So promo is just think of it as a trailer, like a commercial for the, for the next week's episode. Okay, so it's like promoting the upcoming episode. Then you have, for lack of a better word, there might be a better term here, trailer. And this is a commercial that promotes the show in general. Okay, so like that's, we have something on hold right now. That's a show that promotes, it's a commercial for the show. Promo is generally referred to as like a commercial for the specific episode that's, that's coming up. So this is what this was, all right? Now, these generally pay by week and the amount of usage. Is it gonna be TV commercials and radio and internet ads? Like how big is the usage and how long? And it's usually per week. So for this, we got 7,500 a week. And I think that was like a pretty standard rate at, at the time. Again, we were new, we were kind of newbies, so we didn't have like a ton of cred behind us, but we had a great agent and um, that's what we got at the time. And generally promos will run just for a week because it's just promoting the next week's episode. Now we lucked out and I remember we got the placement. We we're excited. My production partner was down in Miami for spring break and you know, I called him and, and you know, we got it. And then a couple days later we got a call back from our sync agent and she was like, Hey, you know how I told you it was going to run for a week. And we we're like, yeah, and we thought it was like bad news or something. She's like, well, triple that. It's running for three weeks because it was a special episode. Cuba Gooding Jr. Jr. was in it. So they wanted to run this promo for a longer period of time. So all in all, the total was 22,500. 2,500. That was the total. Three times 7,500. Now, breaking this down, 
25% went to the agent. And then the remainder was split three ways, but kind of two thirds and one third. Cause me and Christian were on a production team. So the money just went in the same account, but you know, Christian got a third, I got a third and then Glenn got a third as well. So that's how the money was broken down. All right. So since I'm a noob YouTuber, I totally forgot that this section I actually should have done on the DSLR cam, which is all packed away. Now this doesn't need a whiteboard. So I'm going to put a picture of me testing my camera up so that you can stare at that while I'm telling the story. So how we got this placement, um, back about in, uh, gosh, 2010, I went to a conference thing in Nashville and met a kid who was a Belmont student and we kind of hit it off and talking audio, all that kind of stuff. And then later when I moved back to Nashville from LA in uh, 2014, that's when I, you know, uh, partnered with Christian and we moved the production company from, from LA to Nashville. I reached out to everybody I knew and we were telling him what we did. And he said, well, Hey, I'm interning for this um, person that you should have a meeting with because that's what she does. She does sync stuff. And we met, we met and got coffee and hit it off. And she was like, cool, let's just, you know, we were unproven at that point. Um, but she was like, cool, let's just try one. And she gave us a brief to try and we landed it the first try, which is very, un, you know, not normal, but we happened to, to land that first one. So that's the story. Pretty simple. We met people. Music industry. You meet people. Shocking. Okay, so the fun part of the video is over and now I'm going to rant a little bit. And before I get into it, this isn't to demotivate you from going after sync placements or whatever, but hold on, this will. This might actually make it more, more fun for you. Soften the blow. Um, this isn't to discourage you from getting into sync, but listen, we, we got lucky basically is how, how we got the, that placement. You know, as I mentioned in, in the video, I met someone a long time ago, later on, they happened to intern for someone that got us a meeting and boom, there, there it was. And, and we were able to just, someone gave us a shot. Okay. Now, what I don't talk about in the video is that that was the last big one we, we ever got. And in fairness, we didn't really pursue much sync after that. Also in fairness, we technically do have a song on hold right now for a big thing. If we get it, I'll make a video. If we don't get it, maybe I'll make a video. But uh, really that was our, we got, you know, had beginner's luck and, and got a big one and, and didn't get much after that. Our sync agent signed a lot of really good people after uh, she did that project with us. And, you know, there's a ton of positive videos on sync, you know, on YouTube, and it's really being pushed as this, as this like miracle way to make money and you'll make money for life and all of this. And, and yeah, yeah, for some people that's true. And it's, but it's gonna be for a very small percentage of people. You have to have an extremely high amount of in-show placements to really make anything. And a lot of shows nowadays, just based on how they're being watched, you're not getting these massive like reruns and stuff like you did with these classics like Friends and Seinfeld and all that kind of stuff. There's not a lot of shows like that anymore. So it's just not paying what it was. And again, I'm not a massive expert on this. This is what I'm what I'm hearing from people that we work with and veterans that are that are partners of mine and, and all of that stuff. So it's very difficult to make money. And the ones getting these promos and trailers and all of that, you have to understand that these guys and girls are like the best of the best. Like take take a, like one of the best songs you made and then these they're doing three of those a day. Three of them a day for like a decade. And that's how they're landing these incredible sync agents. They're in the places where these sync agents are. You know, they get a right with someone that signed to that agent and that's how they get in. We had a, a one of our clients, a, a girl we used to produce music for, Anna Mae. That's how it happened for her. You know, our sync agent said, hey, do you have a voice like this? And we said, yeah, um, we, have a, we have an artist that we're working with that sounds like that. Anna met that agent and then boom, took off, had a lot of success with her, then got signed to a bigger company and, you know, still makes money on sync to this day. 
So like, again, it's, it's being in the mix. It's very relationship driven and, um, Yes, you can, of course, build a catalog. I have a good friend, Avery Berman. I, I suggest I'll leave his name in the, in the notes here. Hopefully he's fine with that in the description. You know, he, he'll, he'll tell you too, like he has a ton of placements and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it takes a long time. It's very hard. You're not in control of a lot of the decisions. You know, it's kind of up to other people and their relationships with, you know, the, uh, the TV companies and all that kind of stuff or movies or whatever you're going after. So I just want to let you know that because it's very hard and very few people it's being just pushed as this, like everyone's going to make a bunch of money with it. And the reality is very few will make a lot of money with it. It's the best of the best are making a lot of money with it. So not to discourage you, if you want to do that, then go do that, go get in the mix, be prepared to knock out two, three badass you know, promo sounding songs every day and get in with agents and build those relationships. But you got to commit to being the sync person. All these people you're up against, they're like fully committed to that. You know, there are of course a few that do, that do other things that do various things. But like, man, I just remember the, the people that we were up against on, on these, being able to see how those people work. We, we bowed out pretty quick. We were like, oh, okay, we're, we're good, but we're not that. We, we much preferred working with artists. So just got to let you know, but hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, keep them shades high.